Good morning, everyone. I hope you are safe. Uh, as per instructions uh, given to us about the distance learning, today's lesson from Reading Street to the Common Core Curriculum for Grade 4. Today's lesson is divided into two parts, the comprehension scale, which is the character, plot, and theme, uh, the literary elements. And the second part is, is going to be the vocabulary. Let's start with the first one first, um, the literary elements, which is divided into character, plot, and theme. Just a little bit of uh, focus and explanation here on the page. Yeah, on this paper. Look with me here. The literary elements, we have got uh, three parts. The characters, the plot, and the theme. The first part about the characters, which is the people or animals in the story or in the play. You can find the names for persons, names for animals in your story or in your play. This is the characters. The plot, which is the most interesting part today for the literary elements is divided into uh, a series of events. Started with the exposition, going to the rising action, and the climax, and then falling action, and finally the resolution. Let's take them one by one. The plot first is uh, like climbing a mountain. You start climbing your mountain with the exposition or the setting of the story. The writer has to mention the setting of the story. Setting of the story is where and when. Where is the place and when is the time of this story? And as well, he has to tell us about the characters. He has to introduce the characters that are going to act in this play or in this story. Rising action is the second part when the story or when the problem in the story starts. Then you find yourself in the climax, which is the most interesting part in the story. You start asking yourself many questions about the clues of the story and who is going to happen next. You start asking yourself all these questions to know what will happen next. Then the following action, when the problem of the story starts to be solved and everyone knows the truth. Then the resolution or the end of the story which has a moral lesson that all of us has to learn. And the last part is the theme. The theme of the story is the main idea of the story. Like for example, you find friendship, love, gratitude. It means when somebody feels thankful to somebody else for doing something for him. This is the meaning of a theme. And those are the three literary elements for today. Do not forget, the plot of a story is like climbing a mountain. Do not forget this part. Okay, this is about the comprehension skill for today. Do not forget to read this part about the family, just like ours, uh, in your books. And uh, try to find all the literary elements here, which we uh, studied together today. Uh, the characters of the story, the plot, and the theme of this story. After reading this part, we are going to go to the part of the vocabulary. We have uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight words today. Let's start with the first one here. Listen and repeat. Coil. Coil. Coil here, it means what? Just to check the picture here and you try to figure out uh, this picture is talking about what? Coil. When something is coil, it means what? Yes, you are right. When something is coil, it means spiral or ring. Form it by winding. Something that goes in circles, like what you can see now in front of your face. And number two. Listen and repeat. Rappel. Rappel. Rappel is what? What is rappel? Look at the picture. This is rappel. Yeah, this one. Huh. Rappel here means what? Look at the person here. Yes, rappel, it means to go down 
a rock face or other steep surface by using a double rope coiled around the body. So the word rappel, it means to go down using wood, using a rope. Yes. The third one, lesson and repeat. Ridge. Ridge. Ridge, it means what? The word ridge, look at the picture. Yeah, this one here. What does it mean, the word ridge? By looking at the picture here, you will find that, yes, you will find that ridge. It means a long, narrow hilltop. This long, narrow hilltop here. This is the top of the hill. Yeah, this one here, and this one here, and here. Good. This is ridge. Okay, let's go back again. Yeah. Descent. Descent. Descent, it means what? Yeah, look back again to the pictures. Descent. Yeah, this one here. Look at the boy here on the bike. Look what is, what he, is he doing here. Yeah, you are right. This is the action of descending or descent. Descent here, it means what? Descent, it means an action of moving downward, like this one here. Downward, it means down here, down. After that. Foresaw. Foresaw, it means what? Look at the picture. Foresaw. Yeah, this one. Yes, foresaw. Yeah, look at the, the people here. Look at them. Oh, what is gonna happen here? What is gonna happen? They are holding umbrellas, right? Because what? Do you think of that? It's gonna rain, right? Good. For Saul, it means predicted. When you predict something is gonna happen, or you think that something is gonna happen, this is the meaning of for Saul. After that, shaft. Shaft. What does it mean, the word shaft? Yes, look at the picture and try to figure out shaft. Yeah, this one here. What does it mean, the word shaft? Look at this one. What is it? Yes, I can hear somebody here. Good. Shaft, it means a long and narrow, usually a vertical hole. This is a hole. This one here. So, a vertical hole, it means shaft. After that. Trapped. Tracked. What does it mean, the word tracked? Yeah, look at the picture. Tracked, it means... Yeah, look at the guys here. What are they doing? And where are they going? They are riding camels, right? Uh, they tracked. Tracked? Yes, tracked, it means made a slow and hard journey. This is a slow and hard journey. This is the meaning of tracked. It's a different than going uh, in a journey, for example, using a helicopter or using a plane. So it's a um, long, it's a, a slow and hard journey. After that, and the last one. Void. Void. Void, it means what? Look at the picture. Void. Yes, this one here. Void. Look at this place here. Can you see anybody here? Yeah, some, some, some people here are watching an empty place, right? So the meaning of void is a completely empty place or space. A completely empty word, empty space. This is the last word for, for today. Uh, don't forget to go to the next page for climbing new heights. This guy here is going to tell you about a journey that he did before. Read it and you try to put all the words in sentences to make sure that you understand well. See you again, guys, in another lesson. Bye.